Hello my loves, Tony here from DL Yarn Crafts and welcome back. I don't know about you, but it feels like a long time since we caught up. How are you doing? You know, how your mama doing? Today I want us to get all caught up and what better way to kiki than over whips and coffee, am I right? I'm about to dive back into one of my absolute favorite projects. Today I am sharing with you my 2024 temperature blanket. I've been stealing moments to work on this project all year, but with the crazy summer I just had, I found myself two months behind. But you know what, I'm not even stressed and I prepared for this exact scenario by working up one of my easiest patterns and I can get caught up in no time. Now if you're not already familiar with temperature blankets, no worries, here's the Cliff Notes version. A temperature blanket is a representation of each day's temperature throughout a calendar year broken down into crochet form. And since every city's weather is a little bit crazy in different ways, every single blanket is going to be unique and your blanket is even going to be unique from year to year. I'm obsessed with these kinds of projects and I've been making temperature blankets every single year since 2019. My very first First temperature blanket was Tunisian crochet, of course. My second temperature blanket was Granny Squares, and she is gorgeous, but I will never do that project again. 2021 gave us our very first linen stitch squares blanket, and 2022 was the year of the linen pixel temperature blanket. Last year was my favorite by far, and that was the chevron tassel blanket. It actually lives with me here in my studio. I can't get enough of that one. Now, every single one of these projects lives on my blog for free, so you can click over there to find tips, tutorials, and videos to get you started. The easiest way to find those is by clicking this link right here. And if I point it in the right direction, go ahead and like this video. And if I point it in the wrong direction, why not subscribe? For this year's temperature blanket, I wanted to take it easy because I knew 2024 was gonna be wild. So I am revisiting my linen stitch squares temperature blanket design. Each round is a different day and each square represents a different month. So by the end of the year, I'm gonna have 12 squares to seam together. And for those wondering how I get my squares to be the same size, each of my squares has 30 33 rounds. So each of the first several rounds are for each day of that month. And then I do the rest of the rounds in a neutral color to kind of add a bit of a border to each of my squares and to also get them to the same size. So now you know. I do try to be diligent about keeping up with my temperature blanket, but the last few months have just been off the charts busy. In July, I had my family reunion down south and then I went to go visit my Rhinebeck besties up in New Jersey. In August, mom and I went out to Flock Fiber Festival in Seattle and I launched the fourth annual crochet academy which is just a ton of work and then i just got back from the squam love art retreat i'm talking four days lakeside all we're doing is art classes and eating 10 out of 10 would recommend with all that going on there just wasn't a whole lot of time for tent blanket stitching but i found myself with a free afternoon and a fresh cup of the good stuff so let's get stitching i figure we'll play this video pretty chill i'll start stitching kind of catch you up on what i've had going on and we'll see how far we can get in this lazy afternoon and while we're at it why not brew a fresh pot of coffee, grab your latest whip and stitch along with me. We'll have a little bestie stitchy hang, you know what I'm saying? Now, if all that sounds like a good time, make sure you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I love having you here and we should do this again soon. Now, before we grab our hooks, we do have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. And today that is Ready Freddy. I think I'm saying that right. And when donating, Ready Freddy said, I've been crocheting for a bit, but your how to crochet video is a game changer. I struggled with the last two loops for double and treble crochets. Turns out I was keeping the loops at the head of my hook, making them too small to get into. Now I push them down thanks to you. Oh, Freddie, honey, I am so glad that I could help. That is one little frustration you don't ever have to deal with again, and that is something to celebrate. Now, if you like my video and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows, I might shout you out in the next one. Now, let's talk temperature blankets. For this year's temperature blanket, I'm using my very own yarn, Happy Place, which I developed in collaboration with the homies at Hobie. It's a wool cotton blend, DK weight, and I picked 12 colors for my temperature blanket. And fun fact, Happy Place just celebrated its one year birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Place. I am living for the colors I chose. So let's take a moment to appreciate each of the colors that I picked for my 2024 temperature blanket. So first is Hunter Green, which is a warm grass color. Then there's Blueberry, a deep navy. I've got Almond Nicks, which is a neutral cream. Sky blue is a light denim blue. Aqua is a dreamy blue green that reminds me of being on an island somewhere. Aubergine is everyone's favorite purple. This one sold out so quick. I'm glad I kept some. Peach is exactly what the name implies. Ochre is a warm golden yellow. Petrol is a gorgeous deep teal that I cannot get enough of. Foggy is a watery light gray. Lollipop is my favorite kind of hot pink. And maple syrup is a gorgeous rusty orange. 
And now that you've seen all the pretty yarn, let me show you what my basket actually looks like. So this is the basket that I'm keeping all of my temperature blanket yarns in. I like to keep them in a basket just so when I do have time to work on my blanket, I can grab this, grab my hook and get right to work. I keep the yarns in order from coolest all the way down to warmest. So the coolest color for me this year is this hunter green and the warmest is going to be maple syrup all the way down here. And the color that I'm using to put the border on all of my squares is this one right here. This is Salty Licorice, which is one of the Milan shades and it's just this really pretty neutral gray. In addition to keeping my yarns in here, I'm also keeping all the labels that I use because I want to keep track of how long I spend within each temperature range. I used a website called temperature-blanket.com. So grateful to the creator who made that because it's a completely free resource that helps you not only plan your temperature blanket, but also get a better feel for what it might look like at the end of the year. And I used that resource to try to evenly distribute my temperatures between my colors to try to use them as evenly as possible. I've had years where I've used one color, I've gone through three balls of it, and another color I've gone through half a ball. So I'm trying to evenly distribute the numbers a little bit. So we'll see if that actually works out this year. I've mainly been using my We Crochet Dots five millimeter hook to make my blanket this year. So I keep that in the basket as well. Keeping the same hook throughout the year, make sure I maintain my gauge. They remind me a lot of the Clover Amours just with a longer handle. And that's always been my only criticism of those hooks. I've also kept the same pair of scissors with this project since day one. And I would say that there's a tapestry needle in there, but I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm weaving in my ends as I go. I'm just gonna save that for the end. The next step is to set up my iPad, which is where I track all of the temperatures for the square that I'm working on that month. I write down the dates, the temperatures, and the corresponding colors. So when I sit down to work on a month, I can go straight through from the first day to the last day. I often get asked what app I use for note taking. I prefer to use Notability and I've used it for years. There's also good notes and I have that app but I've just never ever used it. I like to use Notability for all of my designing as well as running my business. I really appreciate the simplicity of it and it's really fun to choose different colors and weights for the note that I take so I can keep myself organized. We'll start off by writing the dates for the month. In July there were 31 days. Then I'll go to the website called wunderground.com to pull historical weather data. You can find the weather for your city really easily with this website and it is completely free. Then for my blanket I'm going to write down all of the high temperatures. I've always done high temperatures for my blanket since that really gives me the most variation. And then after writing the temperatures, I can write down the corresponding colors and I'll know what the rounds will be for that month's square. I've got the entire month written out and now I've reached the most exciting part, which is the anticipation phase. You know, I know what colors I'm going to use for the month, but I don't know exactly how they're going to look inside the square. So it's really exciting to see how it all looks laid out. Now I brought you over to my wall of happy place because I decided to call an audible on my blanket. For the month of July and most likely August, I'm gonna have some really high temperatures and my range only goes up to 85 degrees. Anything over 85 is all the same color, which is maple syrup. Now maple syrup is gorgeous and all, but that's just a whole lot of rust orange. So I wanted to break things up. I added another temperature range to try to get a little bit more variation in color in those higher temps. And I decided to go with this color right here, this is called Sunshine. It's this lovely butter yellow, and I think it's gonna look great next to colors like maple syrup, lollipop, and petrol. All of those are my highest temp colors, and I think this really bright yellow is gonna help break it up a little bit. But we shall see. If I hate it, I'll just swap in something else. And that's something you can do when you make a temperature blanket, because it's your blanket, so they're your rules. I talk a lot about calling audibles and making adjustments in my How to Prep Your Temperature Blanket video, which you can find in... God, one of these corners, stop asking me which one. I think it's this one. Now that all the prep work is done, I can finally click over to Netflix and decide what I wanna watch while I work on my project. Temperature blanket time is usually when I can indulge in my reality TV obsession and I do need a new show. I just finished watching Love is Blind UK. Love is Blind is like my favorite series on Netflix. Now the premise is just about the same as regular Love is Blind, but I feel like nearly everyone on the UK version was very mature and very thoughtful in their decisions, which made it really hard for me to figure out who was gonna stay together and who's gonna break up. They kept me guessing all the way to the very end and I really hope that they do another season. Since I need a new show, it's a toss up between two that I was able to find. So first is the new season of The Circle, which is pretty much like if Instagram came to life. And then there's a show called Down For Love for people on the spectrum trying out dating. Now I've watched some shows like Down For Love before and they always make me cry and we're not gonna do that on camera. So I figure we're going for The Circle. Now let's boot it up and I'm gonna get started on my July square.
Hey y'all, voiceover Tony here, and I figure I would chit chat with you while I'm stitching and kind of let you know what's going on with me. So the big thing going on right now is we are in the middle of the Crochet Academy Crochet Along. If you're not familiar, Crochet Academy is the Learn to Crochet event that I've been putting on for the last four years. And amazingly, over 30,000 people worldwide have graduated out of that program. So essentially we start with the basics, we learn some techniques, and then we get into the nitty gritty. This year we talked about color theory, we talked about altering patterns. We talked about what you can do next after you learn the basics of crochet. And people are really, really taking to it, which is so amazing to me. Sometimes I wonder if people even care about learning the basics of crochet. And then I remember there are so many people who've never tried this craft before. And that is just wild to me. So I'm glad to offer that resource to folks. Now, even though the education portion of that program is over, you can find all the lessons over on my blog, toycblog.com. And I will link that down in the description description. So after the education portion is over, we get to the really fun part, which is the crochet along. There are five new designs this year, bringing us to a total of 19 pieces that have been created for Crochet Academy. Every single one of those pieces comes with a free pattern as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial. And I'm so proud to see makers diving headfirst into these projects. Wearables, Tunisian crochet in the round, working on the bias, playing around with the waffle stitch. There are so many techniques and fun things to learn with these projects and people are really, really taking to them. As of recording this video, we are two weeks into the crochet along, which means that we have two weeks left and there are a few really fun prizes still to win, including a bag from Della Q and a $125 shopping spree from Lion Brand. I'm also throwing in a mystery goodie box to the winner of our final week. So if you're interested in that, I strongly recommend that you pick one of the Crochet Academy projects and join us either over on Instagram or within my membership community, which is the Yarn Hive community. Even if you don't wanna join the crochet along, I strongly recommend that you check out the tutorials for this year's patterns. They are so fun, so addictive, and they work up really, really quickly. So I hope you join us. It's been a whole lot of fun seeing how people remix these designs and really have some fun with it. So between last season and this season, I already forgot how ridiculous the circle can get. And honestly, you have to get past the first episode because I feel like the first 15 minutes, all anybody is doing is yelling, screaming about how nice the apartment is. And oh my God, the circle chat is open. And who is this person? And I love tequila. Like... It's just a lot to get started, but I mean, it's fun. It's a party and they're all trying to win $100,000. So everybody is like on 10 right now until the strategy starts. And that's when I begin getting interested. So we'll give it a few episodes, but I'm enjoying it so far. And that first few minutes has gotten me through the first 10 rounds on my July square. I am already so excited about this. These are all my warmest colors because of course July is super hot. And I think the addition of that sunshine yellow color was the perfect choice. It's really breaking up all these really rich, deep colors with some lightness, some brightness, and that summery feel that I'm always going for. I'm gonna have to put the circle on pause and jump into Open Stitch, which is an open Discord channel that we have as part of the Yarn Hive community. Now the Yarn Hive community is a private membership group that I set up earlier this year, and it is just so very much fun. We just talk yarn and crochet, and we have all kinds of good times inside there. So Open Stitch is just a chance for anybody available to get together, talk yarn, talk crochet, have a good time. So I'm gonna jump in there for a bit with my temperature blanket, and I think some of the other folks are gonna be working on their Crochet Academy project. Oh no, four o'clock's a good time for me actually because it's before dinner. Hey, Tony! Hey y'all, how you doing? How's it going? How are you doing? Good, looks like I just joined the party. Don't let me interrupt. Yeah. Oh my. Ooh, oh, is that the two of wands scarf? It is, yes. <sighs> That's gorgeous. All right, what is everybody else working on? Temperature blanket. I'm like oh, two yeah. and a half months behind. <laughs> <laughs> it's real bad. I don't even know when you have time to sit down and actually crochet. I don't. You know what? Me neither. The only reason this is working right now is because I'm literally recording a YouTube video while I do this. Like it's <laughs> 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 so surprise. You're gonna be on YouTube. I remember when I was like early on, I would make gifts for people, and they're like, "Oh, that's nice," and I'm like, "Okay, I got it. <laughs> got it. You don't like that one." <laughs> 
So I just wrapped up Open Stitch with the girls over in the Yarn Hive. It was so much fun and I was about to come back and tell you all about my temperature blanket square. I got through round 16 while we were chatting, but I've been very kindly interrupted by the cutest little puppy in the world. I think somebody is ready to go for a walk. So let's take a little break um, and take this little buddy out. You ready to go for a walk, babe? Oh my gosh, I love you so much. You stink. Oh my gosh. Ugh, you stink. You stink. Mm. Let's go. Are you growling at me, mister? What did you say? <laughs> come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pepperoni, come on. <laughs> come on, Pepper, let's go. Oh my God. I can't even open my own door. Oh, silly goose. Come on. This way? Sounds good to me. Come on, Pepperon. Where you going, baby? We going this way. Come on. You ready to go home yet? Uh-uh, Pe Pepper, get over here. No, we ain't going that way. We going this way. Back to the house. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna tell you one thing though. I've been a dog mom for about a year and a half and I will never get over how nasty it is to pick up dog poop. Even in the little baggies, listen, I got a whole system. And no matter how you slice it, it's nasty, it's nasty. That's why cats will always be superior. I don't mind picking favorites, cats is the best. You ready to go home, chicken boo? Come on, let's go, you want a treat? Oh yeah, he heard the T word, okay. So we are back from our walk. It always feels good to touch a little grass, you know what I'm saying? So it felt nice outside, but I cannot wait until it is properly fall. We are still kind of mid-September and that means it doesn't know if it wants to be summer or fall. It's cold in the morning, hot in the afternoon. Right now it's 83 degrees outside. Oh, I am not built for this kind of heat, honey. I am melting. Ping. So I'm back in the AC, about to turn on my ceiling fan, get back into the circle and finish up my July temperature blanket square. Now, as amazing as temperature blankets are, would you believe that they are not everybody's cup of tea? Like, right? Go figure. <laughs> Now I asked my friends over on YouTube what they thought of temperature blankets and the sentiments ranged from, I like them. I think they're such a cool way to track a moment in history to I loathe them. Mine always turns out too big and I never like the colors by the end of the year. One common sentiment that came up a lot was that tracking temperature itself is boring. And you know what? I get that, right? It's cold in the winter, it's hot in the summer, same old, same old, and that can get a little annoying year after year. Well, not for me, but I guess for some people. So I get why you might want to switch it up, right? Maybe tracking the weather is not for you, but maybe you want to track something about weather conditions, maybe humidity or precipitation. Maybe you want to track your workouts or the number of steps that you take. Maybe you can even track a sports team that you're super duper interested in and track their whole season. One girl on TikTok actually did a poop blanket and while it is disgusting, it is pretty creative and she did end up finishing her blanket. So yay her. Now I personally have been getting interested in a mood blanket. This is not a novel concept. I saw this somewhere where somebody makes a list of like 12 to 15 of their most common moods and then track it daily. I've seen people too add a journaling component to this as well to try to figure out what contributes to those moods and kind of how that changes over the course of the year. I think that might be fun to switch it up a little bit for myself next year because I've been doing temperature blankets for five years straight and something like like a mood blanket. It might be a fun way to jazz it up, but either way, year-long blankets are here to stay for me. They're really my comfort project, right? It's a safe place for me to land after the hustle and bustle of life. I'm often quite busy, so when I can sit down with a project like this and watch its progress over the course of the year, it's just really soothing for me. And honestly, who doesn't want a good cozy blanket? Alrighty, my loves, I am back, and today is getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm gonna have to call it. I wasn't able to completely finish my square in the time that we spent together, but I will have some time to work on it this evening, and I'm super excited to get this one done and get some more progress on my blanket. But before we go, I thought it would be fun to take a little step back and look at all the progress we've made over the year. Even though I'm a couple months behind, that doesn't mean I haven't done anything all year long. I've got several squares done, starting with, here's January. 
and that's February, getting a little bit warmer. Here's March when I started second guessing everything. Then April arrived and I couldn't imagine changing one thing about this. May is when things really started heating up. And here's June, my favorite square, of course, because it's got my birthday in it. And here's the square we've been working on. September is looking really, really lovely. I'm so glad I added that sunshine yellow. Even though we've only got a couple of rounds of it in this square, I think it adds some lightness, some levity, some playfulness, some joy into this square. And it doesn't just make it all look so dang on hot. I really adore this project and I'm excited to continue working on it. It's giving this like mix between boho and 90s Nickelodeon kid. And it's not exactly sure what it wants to be. So maybe it's just in a lane all its own. And that's one of the things I love about temperature blankets. You never really know what it's gonna turn out like, but if you don't mind a little bit of chaos, this might be the project for you. But what I love about a temperature blanket, why I keep coming back to these year after year after year is because it's my soothing project. It's my put on a new series and just relax in the corner of the couch kind of thing. And I know we all have those kinds of projects, the ones that you reach for over and over again. And even if it's not a temperature blanket, as long as you've got something on the go that you can reach for in between those bigger projects, you're golden, honey. Now a temperature blanket is not gonna be for everyone, but if it's something that you've been considering, my best piece of advice is to personalize it and make it something that is really important to you. This year, my temperature blanket is important to me because I'm using my own yarn that I developed for it. So I'm excited to see how a color palette I dreamt up over two years ago is going to turn out in this crazy chaotic piece. Now, if you're looking for ways to customize your blanket, there's a million different things that you can do. One of the easiest ways to personalize it is thinking about what the criteria is for your color ranges. Are you basing it off of temperature? And if you do, are we doing highs, lows, or mid temps? And if you want to scrap the temperature idea altogether, because I get it, not everybody's cup of tea, you could think about something like tracking moods, tracking sports scores, tracking the sunrise, something that lights you up and makes you interested enough to go back to this project week after week, month after month, all year long. I know of a woman right now who is making a temperature blanket for her 80 year old grandfather, and she has worked with him to figure out where he was on his birthday for 80 years years and now she's translating that into this gorgeous blanket that is going to be meaningful not only to her but also to him and that's the kind of thing that is going to draw you back into this project now if you've decided that temperature blankets are a good fit for you after you finish watching this video i recommend that you check out this one right here in that video i am walking you step by step through how to plan your temperature blanket and make sure you've got a project that you absolutely love from picking colors to patterns to how to stay motivated throughout the year because that really is the hardest part and from there you can either work from stash or find a yarn that you're going to love between now now and Christmas and get started on your very own project. And it's never too early or too late to start planning your temperature blanket, but check out that video before you get started just to make sure you're prepared. So I'm gonna keep working on my square tonight. I do wanna finish it before I go to sleep and I can't wait to come back and show you what the final square looks like. And I'm also very excited to add these cute little tags that my friends from Angie and Britt sent me. So these are the tags. And as you can see, they have a number and the year on them. So one of these tags is going to go on each square. And now that my squares are starting to pile up I'm starting to get them confused like which one is March and which one is April so once I put these little tags on there not only will I be able to tell them apart but it'll be a nice little keepsake since it's got the year on it and it'll remind me at some point in the future this is what I was doing in 2024 if you're interested in customizing some tags for your very own temperature blanket I'm gonna have these linked down in the description it'd be amazing for you to support this women-owned small business I've been a fan of Angie and Britt for years and years and years and they just do impeccable work Hey darlings, editing Tony here and I was able to finish my temperature blanket square and I love it. I feel like every single time I finish one, I'm like, ooh, that was my favorite. But just look at her. She is beautiful. She kind of matched my moo a little bit. Okay, I'll see you girl. I'll see you working it. I was even able to get my little tag on the back. Look at it. Oh, it's so cute. I just got to work on getting it centered on the back of the square, but I guess this will teach me not to try to sew things at midnight, but we work with what we got. I love it so very much and I hope you like it too. All right, back to the video. All righty, my loves, that is it for me. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so very much. And I would love to know, what are your thoughts on temperature blankets? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Have you made one? Will you never make one? Sound off in the comments. I can't wait to read them all. Thank you so much for spending the afternoon with me. It was really nice getting caught up and I will see you in the next one. Bye friends. <laughs>